hi everyone so let's continue guys with part four so we have seen part one part two part three and now we're gonna see the part four okay so for anyone who doesn't watch the three parts i invite you to watch it and then continue continue with us okay so let's go directly where we have stopped in the part three so here we're gonna see the bios as you can see okay so as i told you before basically this is a complete course about how to diagnose and repair any did laptop motherboard okay so i guarantee for you guys if you follow me and continue with me until the end of this course i guarantee for you that you can repair and fix any failed or dead motherboard okay so because this course is based on my experience i told you before that i had repair more than 2000 laptops okay so my specialty is laptop repair okay so i will share with you my experience just follow me with me of course you can follow me on the youtube channel on the patreon page in the patreon page i share a very unique content i can get with you in touch closely in the patreon page and of course in my website where i post articles about how to repair diagnose laptop motherboard so let's get started so we have seen as you can see here the fifth cause of so before we have seen that the isio or the super the super input output io is one of the cause is one of causes that can cause a d laptop motherboard and i have shared with you the three methods that you can use to detect if the SIO is bad or not so the first method by checking the heat okay the heat of this ic of course using your finger or the thermal camera okay so the second method is by checking the ceramic capacitors around the ic okay so if you find that one or more ceramic capaci capacitor here is shorter to the ground means automatically you have a bad is io okay and the third method to check the super io is by checking the inputs and outputs so of course we gonna see in details in the next lectures how to test integrated circuits including the super io because i told you before that the integrated circuits it's not easy to test it it's not like a diode capacitor or resistors no the integrated circuit are complex a little bit because they contain many pins or terminals okay for example like this one how you can check this integrated circuits okay i will give you the secrets tips and tricks to check or to test this kind of integrated circuit never check it or test it using the multimeter directly in these terminals you can make a short circuit you should look for extensions okay here for example for this pin this is its extension in this ceramic capacitor for this pin for example you should follow the path here we have extension in this resistor so avoid to to put the multimeter directly in the integrated circuit terminal you should use extensions okay so let's continue so let's go here so the fifth cause that can cause a bad or a dead laptop motherboard is the basic input output system or bios so failed bios can cause a dead computer motherboard when the firmware inside it becomes corrupted because the bios contain a program or 
a firmware inside it okay when this firmware is corrupted or damaged the motherboard will stop working because the BIOS is responsible for the post or power on self test and computer booting and the computer cannot turn on without the self test so the BIOS is the first component that launch the system in the laptop without it the laptop or computer cannot turn on okay so BIOS chip circuit diagram this is basically the BIOS chip circuit diagram that contain eight pins okay so the most chip used in laptop motherboards is e is always four terminals okay so here we have the first pin here we're gonna find here three volts so this is the output the here also in the pin number three we have right product here we have the ground always the pin number four is connected to the ground and then we have the input the clock the hold and the vdt so without powering on the laptop you should always find 3.3 volt in this pin okay so without powering on or switching on the laptop if you check using the multimeter you will find 3 volt or 3.3 volt here if you didn't find it means you have a problem in the power especially in 3 volt 5 volt circuit okay so this is how you can check whether you have a right voltages in the motherboard or not so note when you encounter a failed bios chip corrupted firmware you should or you have to program or flash the bios with appropriate firmware using the bios program so if you get a failed bios and of course as a note about 50 percent of laptop problems is due to bias okay that's why this is a very important point or information that you should know so i have a question if you have a bad or a damaged bias of course a corrupted firmware what should you do first you should flash or program the bias this is the bias so to flash or to reprogram the BIOS, you need what exactly? So you will need the programmer. Okay, so here we have the BIOS. We gonna need the programmer and the firmware. Oh, okay, the correct firmware because the firmware inside this one, for example, is corrupted. So we gonna use another firmware and of course the software that we gonna use to program this one okay so we're gonna put this bios in the programmer using the holder the bios holder so basically this is two kind of programmers okay so this programmer basically is used here it is connected to the laptop in the usb port and we connect this one directly to the motherboard directly to the motherboard but for this one you should desolder and remove the bios and connect it to the bios holder and then connect it to the programmer and then launch the software and then upload this firmware directly to this bios and then you will get an operated and good bios so the six cause is the major connector so basically guys this is one of the most important cause here you know that many technicians and engineers as i told you before ignore the ports and connectors and based on my experience about more than 40 causes or did motherboards due to damaged connectors so please don't forget the first thing to do if you get a failed laptop is to check the ports and connectors including the power jack okay so the power jack also we consider it as a connector this one also you should check it okay so the connectors and ports and are very mandatory okay 
Because, for example, for the USB connectors, if two pins or terminals are connected together, bended pins, you could get a short circuit. Then the motherboard will be a dead motherboard. So the same thing for all kind of parts. Okay, that's why please pay attention to connectors. So here we have the main chip connectors can cause also a dead motherboard. That's why you should always check the connectors when you get a dead or any other failed motherboard. So three, how to diagnose a dead laptop motherboard? To diagnose a a laptop motherboard you should check the following parts in order okay so basically you should or you have to check first the laptop adapter okay the laptop adapter then the power jack is it good or not or the DC jack because basically the DC jack is the bridge between the outside and the inside. Without it, the power cannot get into the motherboard. Then of course, you should check the connectors. I didn't write here connectors, but the connectors are the third step. Then the presence of plus V bat about 19 volt in the motherboards. Okay, you should check next to the power connector or to DC connector, for example, here, as you can see, here we have the DC connector. You should check whether we get here 19 volts or not. Okay, so let's see the fourth step here. We have the 3 volt, 5 volt power system or circuit. So the 3 volt always and 5 volt always are are always present in the motherboard without pressing or powering on the motherboard then the three volts in pin number eight of the bios here in pin number eight you should get 3.3 volts or 3 volts without powering on the motherboard okay then if you find that all these voltages i mean those are good then you should program or flash the bias chip to solve the problem if you get this voltages in the motherboard means the voltages the state of voltages are good you don't have problem with voltages so automatically you should reprogram the bias so so how can this is a very important part how to check for a short circuit in the motherboard here i am going to give you a secret i will show you a secret that you can use to troubleshoot an, a short circuit in any motherboard so the secret is inductor so how i will show you how so you know that you can give me any motherboard any short circuit motherboard i will detect the short circuit and the the cause of the field less than 15 seconds yes less than 15 seconds using this technique using the secret that i'm going to share with you so but guys we gonna see okay this part in the next video in part number five so thank you guys and of course please for anyone who doesn't yet subscribe to my channel you are very welcome i invite you to subscribe in order to get a notification when i when i upload the next videos and of course for anyone who want to join me in the patreon page where i share for free laptop schematics you can ask me for any laptop schematic you want i will upload it for you and of course i share a unique content and unique tricks tips and secret and of course i have a website where you can check some articles and of course thank you very much again see you tomorrow with part number five please don't forget to like the video